Hi everybody and welcome to my channel, Two Saw Acres. So it's been about six, seven, maybe even eight weeks since my last video. It's been a pretty busy summer to say the least. I finally got caught up on most of my gotta do things. So I finally have a little bit of time to get to my other projects like this log splitter. This is more than likely going to be a two, three, four part series. Uh, we're going to be going over fabrication, hydraulics, a uh, little engine maintenance, small engine maintenance, and a few other miscellaneous things. Basically going to rebuild this homemade log splitter from the ground up. Let me give you a quick walk around here and show you what we're going to be doing. And if you haven't, I invite you to like and subscribe, help the channel grow. So here we are. This thing is massive. It's a homemade unit. Um, I redid the work surfaces or the work tables right after I got it just to make it usable. It's got about a 30 inch stroke on the cylinder. The cylinder ram or piston is about, uh, well I guess this would be the ram. I think it's two and a quarter inches and five and a half inch diameter cylinder on it. 15 and a half horse uh, engine, yard machine engine, and I had taken out the 16 gallon per minute hydraulic pump because it was so slow. Holy cow. This thing probably, I, I would guess, 12 to 15 second extension, just one, direct, one way. And that's just so slow, you know, and I'm splitting uh, almost 90 face cord right now. And I need something that can go a little bit faster than that. So I actually uh, picked up this uh, hydraulic power unit from an auction last summer. or No, earlier this year, actually. And it's got a 24 horse uh, Onan on it. And the Onan cranked right up and runs great. Uh, but I didn't need that. I just need the hydraulic pump. I didn't realize, and I've had to do a lot of learning here. I didn't realize that that hydraulic pump was a single stage hydraulic pump, which is horrible for log splitters. So that's actually why I do these videos, because I find myself doing projects where there's not a whole lot of information floating out there. So after a bunch of reading and talking to people and learning about it, I picked up a whole pile of new parts. We got a 28 gallon per minute two stage hydraulic pump. We're going to upgrade the whole system. We're using a recirc valve, recirculation valve, and a dump valve. And I got a new selector valve. And then it uh, just happens that there was a clearance item at my local tractor store for a Briggs & Stratton tune-up kit. So that'll work great. And that's the other unit. I picked up, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks off a of marketplace, a Briggs & Stratton 24 horse twin. And I'm hoping that we can get all this put together. Um, yeah, single stage pumps do not work good for uh, log splitters because the ran you're, you're typically using a smaller engine anyway. Um, and when I finally got this one all rigged up, it uh, as soon as the ram felt any resistance, it just locked up this poor little engine here. You know, the back pressure from the hydraulic pump, it was just too much and it just stopped the engine cold in its tracks. The way these two-stage pumps work, there's a bigger gear set and a smaller gear set. The bigger gear set pumps uh, the fluid faster, and it has a pressure relief. So at a certain point when the ram or the splitter, or however, you know, whether you got the wedge on one side like this one or the wedges on the other side, but as soon as it feels resistance, that it backs up the pressure in the two-stage pump, and it then bypasses the um, bigger gear set. It moves on to the smaller gear set, which pumps the fluid slower, but allows pressure to build so you don't stall out your engine. So my goal is to get this thing down to about a, I'm hoping about a five second uh, extension and five second retraction. Um, I think that's doable, but we'll see. So first thing up, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, cart this little dude out to, uh, Get it all cleaned off. Yesterday I blew it all off with compressed air. And uh, now I want to take it out and I'm going to spray it down with some Purple Power Cleaner. Scrub it down, get it all cleaned up, get all the um, shrouds, you know, the fan cover and all that stuff. Get everything cleaned up and that'll be the first project or first part of the project is getting the engine mounted. Alright everybody, we're back. Everything cleaned up pretty doggone nice. 
Got all the shrouds and plastic covers and everything cleaned up. Engine itself cleaned up real nice too, for the most part. There's still a little bit of gunk in there that was hard to get to. I plugged and bagged the intake. I made sure the spark plugs were actually reinstalled so that nothing got in there. I tried not to get anything in the fuel pump or the exhaust. Now there was one uh, vent up here. Um, now the next step, use some uh, masking paper and I cut a one inch circle out using actually the jaw this guy here I just laid this on the paper and used a, an exacto and cut out an exact one inch circle that way I get a perfect center uh, one inch shaft so and then I just pressed on all the bolt holes and the edges to give myself a good outline so uh, I think I got a little ahead of myself here uh, I was getting all excited about doing metal fab and uh, thinking of all the things I got to do. I got the old engine taken off, the old pump out of the way. And uh, I kind of remembered I wanted to uh, take a peek in that carburetor of the new engine. And boy, am I glad I did. Look at that. Completely full of rust. That would have been a nightmare. A lot easier to deal with it out here. Uh, with the engine off or not mounted anyway so I'm gonna get that cleaned up and then uh, we'll go from there so as usual that uh, carburetor took a lot longer than uh, expected or at least I was hoping uh, it turned out pretty good I have high confidence that it's gonna work and to my surprise I got the engine sitting in place more or less and that's the new pump there and there's plenty of room I trying to do here make a mounting bracket that well, looks nice that's it the moment of truth Pretty doggone close. It's just a smidge of play, which I am fine with that. And I am really excited about this. All right, so I got my template cut out for the base plate of the engine. Just cut out a template for this guy. It's called the, it's called the, you know the? Alright, so I uh, spent several hours now, got my bottom mounting plate attached, seems to fit well. Same thing with the uh, plate for the, uh, the, uh, the bracket plate for the pump itself. And the whole purpose of this is to keep the pump in line with the engine as best we can. So I dug through uh, my handy dandy shoebox full of bushings and I was able to find a, a 5 8 
to a one inch bushing and then an inside diameter one inch bushing and put it all together and that should keep our um, drive shafts lined up and I got it shimmed up here and just using this little bugger here to check my distances all the way around and this seems to be about the distance I'm looking for so what I'm going to do now is use this distance here and cut four pieces of probably bar stock okay I got four exactly equal in length pieces tacked in place holding their own weight we're gonna break her free take the whole bracket over to the bench weld her up all right everybody just got done cutting out this hole on the top for the bracket to be able to slip on through everything's lining up we're gonna do a dry fit of the actual engine and the pump see how it looks Holy moly. I think I think that'll work. Gonna be working on electrical today, see if we can't get this engine cranked up. So I had this uh, El Cheapo battery switch on here, uh, cutoff switch or disconnect switch, and uh, it worked great until it didn't. No, it doesn't. So putting a little more robust one in, and I'm gonna change the switch to a two position. Well, I mean, I guess this would be a two position, but this is only open and closed circuit. And I want to be able to, to control two circuits with one switch. So this one will allow me to do that. When, when I turn the switch on, I want to close the circuit for the fuel shutoff valve and open the circuit for the coils, uh, the ground. And then when I turn it off, I want to open the circuit for the fuel shutoff valve and close the circuit for the ground. So it'll kill it. Like it's supposed to, like an ignition switch, just with this. And I'm going to yank this pump back off here, get the fittings put on it so that we can hook up our supply and our outlets, and uh, hopefully do a test run. She's all hooked up engine wise. We'll start with uh, so this is all electrical that we had to do for the engine now. So I put a new battery disconnect in. It's great, love it. The other one doesn't work very good. This one works fantastic. I uh, left most of these wires the same. This uh, solenoid is working fine. I had to put a new bracket on here. Come around to the other side. I got rid of the single throw switch and put this switch in here. So now in the down position, in the off position, it closes the circuit for the ground, which is this one here. I had to troubleshoot a little bit. There's this blue wire here. Blue one is for an hour meter. The black is the ground for the coils so it'll kill the spark. The white is, for, or well, it's gray, white, whatever. That's for the fuel shutoff solenoid. So when we turn it on, we're sending power from the battery straight to the fuel shutoff solenoid and opens it. And we throw the switch off, it opens the fuel shutoff valve circuit so it closes that valve, and then we're grounding the coils. So it's working great. Starter switch still works fine. Let's go ahead and fire it up. Uh, on. Choke. I had to re <laughs> reroute my cables too. But everything seems to work alright. And we had to redo a um, muffler bracket. Which there's really nothing bolting it on. This plate right here is just setting flush. And it's just keeping it from falling down. It seems to work fine. switch shuts it right off just got a fuel tank clamped on it right now I think I'm gonna end up putting the fuel tank right up here somewhere I suppose I could maybe just get some sort of two gallon or so and so somehow mount it right here I don't really want it in the way up here though and obviously I can't have it next to the exhaust back here so thinking maybe right up in here somewhere anyway so that's the Engine mount, 
the bracket fabrication and electrical wiring for the engine itself. This will uh, this will probably conclude the first part. Next is going to be hydraulics. I already started picking away um, at some fittings, trying to figure out what to do. This new pump has a, a one inch NPT inlet. My old one had a three quarter, so it doesn't work. Anywho, that's it. We will uh, catch you on the next video. Please come back.